Hello, welcome, we're in Bagnoles, uh, land of professional cycling, and I'm here with a gentleman who knows a little bit about cycle clothing, don't you? Uh, what do I class you as? Head honcho at Castelli? That'll work, yeah. Steve Smith, thank you for joining me, my main man. Thanks, hey, good to see you again. Okay, we're going to talk about a few things here, because um, I want to pick your brains on sponsorship, clothing-wise, because of course you sponsor Sudel Quickstep. Uh, but um, we're also talking game-changing stuff because you've you've done a little bit of that in your time. Right, first up, sponsorship. Now I got um, I found an old winning magazine. Do you remember winning? Oh, I used to read that cover to cover. We'd get the covers from the tour to uh, the tour of Flanders. Would come in July, so for us <laughs> that was a summer race. Well, I found a great article in uh, a dusty copy of it, and there was a bit in there that talked about team sponsorship of clothing and it was i'm pretty sure it might have been nalini or somebody like that from from back then five jerseys five pairs of shorts a couple of long sleeve jerseys and of course the riders had to wash and dry them themselves back in the good old days yeah, like junior um, teams we know we know things have changed a little bit so come on, let us in on the secrets. How much kit does a so, pro team get today? So 25, 30 years later, they only get a few more jerseys and shorts. Only a few more. But the jerseys and shorts are mostly for training. Yes. Because they're racing in speed suits. So they're getting seven or eight of the regular speed suits and then four, five, six of the lightweight speed suits to last through the speed season. Yeah. But then the Tour de France team gets all new kit just to be sparkly during that race. So, what's what doing that all new kit? How much? Is retail value would be close to it'd be right around a hundred grand for the whole team. Yeah. Um, That's it. It depends a little bit because a lot of times you'll have some small sponsor change. So, if if you don't have to do all the cold weather kit, they might keep some of those garments but if, if we're going to do all new kit for the for the whole team for the tour just for the 21 days it's about 100 grand so you're looking at about 12 grand a pop per rider there for the tour yeah blow me that's it that is a healthy wardrobe yeah. what about for the rest of the team throughout the year what sort of retail price are we looking at there yeah so on average it's uh it works out to about 25 30 000 euros per rider uh, of retail value, wow. merchandise, and that doesn't include any custom kit we have to do for for some of the riders because we don't really do uh, custom kit normally. So we don't have a and you a don't value do, on that. and you don't just mean custom like national jerseys, Correct. do you? Correct. So when if there's a custom fit that we need to do right. for the rider, so so if someone's a, a, a weird shape, yeah, who's a weird shape then? Oh, here who's a weird shape? Uh, you know, some of the time you'll get the sprinters that are pretty big down below yeah. and uh, narrow up above. But Tim earlier is spot on, uh, standard size. So, oh, I thought you were gonna say he's a yeah. weird shape. No, he's, yeah. he looks like a climber almost, but he, yeah. he can go fast. Very yeah. fast, as we've yeah. noticed recently. Exactly. Um, and Kasper Asgreen is tall and, and he likes his stuff, especially his shorts and, and yeah. torso is a, a bit long. So he, he gets, it's still a standard sizing for us because we do a size medium normal length and a medium long length so with with casper we can just put, put him in the long length and and send him on his way right and i am guessing there's riders that get extra kit little bits and pieces to test here and there yeah so the the, the standard supply is kind of done by rider and how how and where they train yeah. and what they prefer right so not everybody gets the exact same set of base layers some, some guys prefer one over the other not all guys get the same gloves and booties because well, they get guys, to pick and choose yeah and it depends some of the guys that are spending the summers or the winters in south of spain don't really yeah. have much use for many shoe covers yeah, thermal jerseys um, and casper stuff, yeah. again he's spending the winters up in denmark so he's out there riding every day in the rain never rides a trainer that's one heck so, of a spreadsheet you've got there yeah. 25 riders and all the and sizes and quantities for yeah. each piece so so how many pieces roughly in total is a rider getting so there's 63 different models, so it must work out to a little over a thousand pieces. A thousand pieces per rider. Because, because there's a lot of socks, because you want to have you want white, white socks. socks. But even then, if, if you look closely at a lot of teams by the Vuelta, there's a lot of dingy socks. So. <laughs> a lot of gray socks. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Right, now, 
on to the next bit of this video, which is, believe it or not, like it's not a product I thought I'd get excited by, but there's, sometimes things come along, game changing products, Campagnolo, quick release skewer, look pedals, time trial bars, the original Cervelo. Soloist. Soloist, that was or the that one, piano. yeah. Oh. There's certain products that will come in, move, move the, yeah. move the yeah. needle and send the industry in a different direction or that, that piece of the industry in a different direction. Mm -hmm. And you, well, you've done it previously. Lycra shorts. Yeah, Lycra yeah. shorts. First non wool jerseys. Yeah. And the first synthetic uh, winter wear. And then more recently, the first really dedicated road race suit, the first aerodynamic jersey were all yeah. things we came up with. Um, and the Gabba, so, of course, which is, the GABA. Yeah. which is which is where we lead. Yeah. Many people will know the history of the Gabba, but go and do a, a shortened version for so, us. We never tire of telling yeah. it. I've told this story a lot of times, but it was really sitting down with the Cervelo testing riders in 2009, uh, and we spent, we we're focused on cold and wet, and we spent an hour and a half talking about their, their rain jacket, proper rain jacket, and it was Gabriel Rosh, nicknamed Gabba, yeah. that put up his hand and was like, yeah, but sometimes you don't really need a big heavy rain jacket. If it's not that cold, you just want to keep your core body temperature. Yeah. You're going to get wet from the inside or the outside. So that doesn't really matter, but let's just, I got to keep warm. I got to be aero. I got to be able to race. Yeah. And so that was really the first time we thought, wait a minute, we don't have to keep every drop of water out, but we have to keep warmth, comfort. Yeah. And we need to race in the rain. And I mean, from, from testing we'd done around that time with a, a proper jacket in the wind tunnel, it was costing on guys at, at, at speed, it was about 40 watts, which is, <laughs> that's a lot. That's a lot. That's what I put out generally. Exactly. That's a, a yeah. threshold. So I, <laughs> I'd be stopped in the jacket. So. <laughs> right. And now with uh, next gen Gabba, Gabba, one that, as I say, yeah, when you showed everybody in the room, we all went, mm -mm. and especially once you, how do I put this? Surprised at your own findings. Yeah, yeah. So, I have GABA from 2010, we uh, continually improved and made it more waterproof, made a better breathability, made it everything function better, it's made it a better piece. So, a lot of people just started riding it in the winter time just as a general ride around yeah. piece. In the back of our minds was the possibility really to raise the bar as a race product because that's what GABA was started out as a race yeah. product and I think there, there's still need for that kind of thing and the the current GABA it, it will wet out eventually um, so in real hard rain uh, mm -hmm. people a lot of people are still reaching for a proper rain jacket um, also we always thought it's like could we make it more aero so we really buckled down and uh, came up with a new fabric technology where we have a high, high, high stretch micropore, so highly breathable waterproof membrane on the outside. Uh, really thin fabric, but there's a lot huge thinner stretch. than the current yeah. gabber. And with the stretch of it, it lets us make a basically a, a speed suit out of a waterproof fabric uh, with enough breathability that you can go out there and you can race. I mean, I've, I did a 230k rain ride into this just to like see how far we could push it. It, it definitely looks different as well. It's yeah. very, very shiny. And the findings from this is, well, is, is quite interesting. It's so interesting that when you were doing the presentation yesterday and we had, we had Casper on the phone, which was nice. Um, he, he gave a certain look, didn't he? He was like, yeah. oh, it's, how do we go about this? But let's just say, be humble, but let um, Mother Hubbard know yeah so go on fire away yeah clearly the idea first is to to race in the rain uh so it's going to be give that protection and, and so uh yeah we new fabric technology fitting everything and then we we threw it in the wind tunnel uh uh back in january and it, the idea the question we we're trying to get to is it's like if i'm racing in my speeds or if i'm racing my jacket and we come to the finale it's like how much is that jacket going to cost me in the finale? Because yeah. every rider takes off his jacket, the finale they do in, yeah. their, in their speed suit, right? Yeah. And so that was like, how, how much slower are we with the jacket? So we turned on the wind and we blew it at 40K an hour, 50K an hour, so 50K more representing those yeah. kind of race speeds. And uh, we couldn't really believe it. So we went out and actually did tests on the road trying to maintain a constant wattage but did the whole 12 runs to get really, really more reliable data uh, which completely backed it up and 
what those two separate tests give us is that the jacket compared to, so jacket put over the San Remo BTW speed suit that Sudal is using uh, is actually about one to one and a half percent faster. So you've not even gone out intentionally to do this as such. Well, you've no. gone out to make a quick rain yeah. jacket, but not, not another product of yours. Off the top spot, as we could say. Yeah, so I mean, no one would actually do that because it doesn't sound. Yeah. And, and even as I say this, right, I, I know you're going to get comments on your YouTube. It's like that. It's not really but even yourself yesterday, you were sat there and you were like, yeah, we're still like, well, scratching out it. So can you work out why it's that fast then? Uh, no, because the wind tunnel you know, gives you a, a number. It gives yeah. you the, re the, the, the resistance. The it doesn't CDA. tell you why. It doesn't tell you why. So, I, you know, first... The, the surface is incredibly smooth. I mean, yeah. just to look at it microscopically, it's really smooth. The fit is really good. Um, and so, you know, any uh, knit fabric is going to have some surface roughness to it. Yeah. So we're getting more smoothness here. And for some reason, the, it would appear that the air is detaching at the right speeds. I and mean, we've, we've done some plasticized materials at uh, time trial speeds that yeah. give us kind of mixed results. So maybe at those higher speeds, it doesn't work quite as well it does in that 40 to 50k range and you know at crunch time the guys are going like 55 60k yeah. an hour so um, we need to do some more exploring but let's say that even if it was merely by far the fastest rain jacket ever is still a big deal yeah so let's let's uh i mean that being faster than a speed suit is, is still feels too good to be true but that's that's what the numbers are telling us so far and so you're going back in the wind tunnel to test it again uh, aren't you two weeks from today we're back two with Renko and with the, the whole Sudal team and we're gonna blow some more air at it and see if we're getting the same data and try to get play a little bit more to figure out really where its limits mm. are we're gonna take it up to a higher speed and try and even more I mean because when you're at those speeds you're really tucked yeah. down so we're gonna try a little bit more to see where it shines more in terms of position but what we've done more so far is just that kind of standard all day if you're sitting on the front of the group driving the group um then what the numbers are telling us for sure is that it's it's fast all right steve thank all you right, for man. your time you've been an absolute Thanks. star thank you for watching let us know what you think in the comments below if you want to call steve out say the old ds they're happy to do that aren't they <sighs> I just don't. Know yeah, I see. That, that, just, your face yesterday him. said it. Uh, yeah, like that. So yeah, join the conversation if you're watching on YouTube below. If not, shoot us up by the socials. I might even put your socials up right. so you yeah. get some abuse. As always, thank you for watching and enjoy your riding.